Dan Pressman from Autodesk, and I'm going to show you 1-2-3D Make. Basically what Make does is allow you to take a 3D model like you see here, um, so any OBJ or STL file that you have, you can load into the software and then generate instructions to rebuild that model out of, uh, out of any material you can cut in 2D. So if you look over here, we've got a couple examples. So this is actually uh, a version of this head where we can come in and select a technique that we want to use. So if we say interlock slicing, you can see that it's now recreated that head as these interlocked parts with a 2D layout. So you can see it's generated an EPS file that has all the notches laid out in it with numbers. Um, and in addition, you also get animated assembly instructions. So if you come in and look at this, it'll show you the first part that you start with. So this will come out of your, your laser cutter. Uh, I can show you that over there. Or if you wanted to cut it by hand, you can do that. And then you can step through the different parts and it'll show you where each part slots in to then recreate the volume of that shape in 3D, uh, in this case, out of cardboard. So, you know, the, the actual material is quite inexpensive, and if you have access to a laser cutter, it's pretty quick to, uh, to cut. Some of the things you can adjust in here, you can change the material that you're working with. So, in this case, we're working with, you know, 12 by 16 cardboard with a thickness of 0.155. You can obviously modify all that on the fly. Um, so as you change, you know, the, the size of your, uh, the sheet that you're going to be cutting it out of, you can see that it starts to shuffle the pieces to maximize the, uh, the use of that material. Likewise, you can change the material thickness. So if you're working with some acrylic that maybe had uh, a little bit more thickness to it, you can see the parts start to thicken here and all the notches in the 2D plan all update in real time. You can also grab any of these slot slices and slide them around and everything will update. So you can see that all these parts are updating to sort of account for that. So this is a great way to sort of make sure that you get the slices where you want. You know, you may be experimenting with some sort of architectural detail where, you know, you want a specific level um, at a specific point to interlock with uh, vertical slices in a certain way. You can obviously do that here. You can also scale the physical object size, so the, the size that the object will be when you put it together. So here you can see we've got uh, another head that's done in a slightly different technique. So this is the interlock slice. If we switch to the stack slicing, you can see it recreates it out of just vertically stacked cross sections. So again, that's a fairly coarse version. If we start to decrease the material thickness, you know, we want to go down to the thickness of, say, this corrugated cardboard that we're using over here. You can see you start to use more sheets, and you also get a lot more resolution in your final result. And when all this stuff comes out of the printer, it actually has you know, all these numbers printed on it, so it's quite easy to, to see where you're going to start. You just sort of build the numbers up. So you start at part one, put part two, part three, part four, and obviously the more slices that you create, you can end up with something like you see here, which is quite a detailed head. So it's a pretty, uh, pretty amazing way to take 3D models and kind of make them into you know, something real that you could build on top of. You could just use them as an armature. You know, if you wanted to take something like this and start to put clay onto it or paper mache or something, you can you know, really capture the volume of that. Here you can see a bunch of other examples. This Buddha statue recreated in that stack technique. This is actually a 3D printed version of the same model. So you can see you can sort of uh, make these objects real through a, a number of different techniques. There's a larger one over here, this uh, recreation of a chair, again, out of corrugated cardboard. So you can see you can really scale things up. And if you look over there, there's a uh, pretty amazing octopus as well. So you get some really cool sculptural qualities out of it, but at the same time, you're you know, creating something that could just be an armature for a more complex sculpture or beautiful on its own. So this is a, another technique that basically uh, gives you flat pieces that you can then bend and you know weld or rivet in this case riveted together again based on a, a simple 3d obj model that you can import a little slightly more advanced version over here out of acrylic again with that interlock slicing technology so you just have a, a 3d file of this shape you put it into the software and it generates all these individual pieces that then slot together like a giant 3d puzzle to recreate this awesome bench sort of a sneak preview. Um, so right now in the tech preview that's available for OS 10, you can load any OBJ model you want, do the, uh, the slicing or the interlocking like you see in the bench over there, and you can save those out as a project file, or then you can export them as the 2D EPS files or PDF files that you can then send to your laser printer or, uh, or cut out by hand.